Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. This morning in the liturgical cycle of the Orthodox Church, we sort of enter back into what we might think of as the more ordinary time of the church year. We've been in the most extraordinary time of the entire calendar year for many, many weeks past, really since we first opened the Lenten Triodium and began our preparations for Pascha. We've come through the great, greatest celebrations of the economy of God's salvation in our world, commemorating the death and resurrection of Christ our God, his ascension to sit at the right hand of the Father for all of eternity, and then last week, the great and holy feast of Pentecost, and the descent of the Holy Spirit, the pouring out of the fullness of God's abiding presence upon the church. We experience it every year, but every year if we're attuned to it, what an amazing thing it is, what an extraordinary opportunity to participate in, to relive, to renew our awareness of the grace of God in the world. But all that kind of came to an end with the leave-taking of Pentecost. And we enter back into sort of the more ordinary cycle of feasts and fasts within the life of the church. But as we do that, it's very interesting that on this Sunday, the first Sunday after Pentecost, the church gives us this commemoration of all of the saints. Is this just mere coincidence that this comes right after, right after the week of Pentecost? There could be any number of times in the year that we could potentially celebrate all of the saints. But specifically, the church places it on this Sunday, I think, in order to draw our attention to a very important truth. And that is that all of the saints, whoever they were, whenever and wherever they lived, whatever their station in life, each and every one of the saints whom we commemorate and whom we venerate in the life of the Orthodox Church, is a conduit, first and foremost, of the grace of the Holy Spirit into the world. This is why we commemorate them as saints. This is why we keep their memory alive. This is why we honor them. On their individual feast days, their individual commemorations throughout the calendar year, and then all together, collectively, on this day. This is a sort of bridge, if you will, this Sunday between the Feast of Pentecost and our individual daily lives. Because what this Feast of All Saints reminds us, first and foremost, is that sanctity, holiness, the presence of saints, is not something that in our experience in the Orthodox Church we should ever regard as extraordinary and rare. But rather, that sanctity, holiness, the presence of saints, is something that we should regard as and desire as ordinary, ubiquitous, everywhere. When we think about all of the saints, known and unknown throughout the history of the church, there's hardly a single place on earth, certainly not a single time, in the existence of the church, its 2,000 year history, and almost no condition of human life from which we can't find saints being drawn. That's one of the amazing things about the commemoration of this day. That we commemorate not only those the known saints, those who everyone knows, the big names, but all those who are known to God alone as well. And when we factor those in, we can say that there's really no corner of the earth there's not in some way, or I shouldn't say no, there are a few corners of the earth perhaps, and no time in human history that hasn't been touched by the grace of God through his saints. Holy people have been among us from the day of Pentecost to the present in so many places and in so many different ways, in so many different conditions. Some of them, as I said, well known, many of them not very well known, perhaps not known at all, except for the grace of God. But all of them bear witness to one central truth, and that is the ability of the grace of God to transform human beings, mere men and women like you and me, into conduits, 
rivers of God's sanctifying grace into the world. Each of the saints, whomever they were, wherever they lived, whatever the conditions of their life, this is why we remember them and honor them, is because they brought the grace of the Holy Spirit into the world by allowing their will to cooperate with the will of God. This is the calling of each and every one of us as an Orthodox Christian, if we truly understand what we're about. Not just to remember the saints of old and to honor their memory as some sort of museum pieces of the past, but to imitate their example and seek by God's grace to become saints as well. Maybe that sounds audacious. Me? A saint? But none of us aspire to sanctity, to holiness, I hope, because we somehow imagine that we're worthy of it. All that we aspire to is to become open to the grace of God, to become cooperative with the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit was poured out in abundance upon his church on the day of Pentecost, who came to empower the disciples, this frightened group of fishermen, to become a transformative force in the entire world. That same Holy Spirit desires to come upon each one of us, to come upon us collectively as a community, as the body of Christ, and to make us the manifestation of God's presence in the world, the manifestation of his love, of his redemption, and of his grace. This is our calling as Orthodox Christians, to set aside every hurdle and every encumbrance, any distraction that would prevent us from turning our hearts, turning our wills, turning our spirits towards cooperation with the divine and Holy Spirit. Because we're called from the day of our baptism and our chrismation through every subsequent moment of our lives to be on the pathway of sanctity, on the pathway towards ourselves becoming saints. Imagine this community here in Eugene, Oregon. How many saints could be produced out of the midst of this holy community? Each and every one of you could be a saint. Each and every one of us can be if we allow ourselves to fully cooperate with the grace of God. The saints possess nothing that has not also been given to us. <coughs> That's also an important reminder on this day. It's not as if there was some special grace given to them that's different from the grace that's given to you and to me. It's the same grace of God poured out on the day of Pentecost given to each one of us in our baptism and our chrismation. If some of them shine much more brightly than we do in the firmament of the kingdom of heaven, it's because not that they received more grace than we did, but because they cooperated more with the grace of God. The same grace has been given to all of us. So on this day, we're reminded of our very, very high calling, that to the best of our ability, according to the measure, the abundant measure of grace that's been poured out upon us, we are called to cooperate with the grace of God, to make ourselves open to receive him, to set aside sin, to set aside encumbrances, to set aside every distraction, so that that grace of the Holy Spirit might flow freely into us and through us, that we might join the company of saints.